ask his friend if he had to choose between money and wisdom, which one he would choose? Which one you would choose, Joshua? Wisdom. Well, the friend said he would choose money. <laughs> mm -hmm. The friend turned back the question and asked the other man what he would choose. The man said wisdom. The guy clapped his, his friend on his shoulder and said, you know what? Everybody choose what they don't have. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think Mahatma Gandhi had told, had told the British Empire that. Namaste, guys. Now let's begin. Pope Francis, a man the Christian world looks up to, is presently visiting Africa. And in one speech, one speech, he gave in the, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, he called on war leaders to recognize the dreadful things that were done over the centuries to the people and the countries of the African continent. He demanded that the foreign nations stop robbing Africa of its wealth for their own selfish and greediness. Hmm. I smiled when I, when I read that today. We are carrying that story tomorrow in the Kaicho News. His exact words are, Hands off the Democratic Republic of Congo. Hands off Africa. Stop choking Africa. It is not a mine to be stripped or a terrain to be plundered. Uncle and auntie, those were the words of the present sitting Pope of the world. Hmm. I feel pleased to hear at least one man joining Glen Lal and is calling a spade a spade, pointing out the crimes of the foreigners and calling on them to stop robbing third world countries of their wealth for their own selfish interests and admit their mistakes, to stop enslaving the people in order to gain wealth for themselves and their families. I hope you, you Guyanese people take note. I hope you take note. Corruption, enslavement has never stopped in this world. This is why hundreds upon hundreds of millions of Africans and Asians are dying like fleas through starvation and lack of health care by their governments. The African continent was ripped and stripped of its people, its blood, its treasures by the foreigners. Today, many countries in Africa that had abundant riches are on life support, almost lifeless, like dead men and women walking. It is all because the foreigners stripped them of their riches, their gold, their diamond, their oil, their bauxite, their timber, their lithium, you name it. Everything they stripped from those countries. Brothers and sisters, isn't this a lesson for us as Guyanese? Lesson for us. Hmm? Look at how them flocking here like vultures in Guyana. They're coming here to put up their hands. Yes, to put their hands on your riches, your wealth. Today, I was told that there was a massive protest in Buxton in which residents blocked the road, burned tires, and even burned a rice truck because one of their villagers were arrested by Kanu officers with some ganja. 
Yes, ganja. And during the arrest, I am told gunshots were fired, which caused the residents to take to the streets. What happened after was a massive buildup of traffic on both sides of the East Coast Corridor, from the main road and on the railway embankment. Uncle and Auntie, the police showed up in numbers and were able to quiet the storm and businesses return to normal, normalcy before 5 p.m. today. Man, I wish our people, all Guyanese, would be so moved to take to the streets for a change in the ExxonMobil contract, which will secure a brighter, a much more beautiful future for all Guyanese so that no one has to make a hustle with ganja to put food on their children's table. And with that I say no more. Read the rest of the Kaicho news tomorrow because there you will get the details and all the salt and the onion and the garlic. <laughs> Today, front page of the Kaicho News has a photograph that showcased South Africa with a population of over 66 million. Bodies are rotting in the funeral parlors because of widespread blackouts. You hear me? Bodies are rotting in the parlors because of widespread blackout. The government now <laughs> giving the families four hours from death to bury the dead. Yes, four hours only they got. That was reported on all the international news yesterday. And I put it on the front page in the Kaicho News today for you people to see what South Africa a rich, rich country has become. Only a few months ago, I was told that the electricity were improving. Today, poultry farmers are bawling. Their livestock is dying like fleas and spoiling in freezers due to the lack of electricity. <laughs> oh. Oh. Your oil money, your oil money done kick out the oil account and your water and electricity sectors will remain the same or get worse come next year. This is how third world leaders manage the affairs of the citizens of a country. Mismanagement, misuse, incompetence, misunderstanding of how anything should operate and run, and corruption are the words of the day. Yes, in bourgeois countries like this, the corruption, uncle, that is going on in this country is unbelievable at the moment. Yes. In just about two years' time, when that little oil money will be coming in, the English dictionary will have to find more words to describe corruption for Guyana alone. Man, when you hear a government can set aside $1,700 million to build one single school in Rupununi Region 9, and have its people starving. Yes. Children going to school with empty lunch kits. Then, please help me. Help me to find words to describe what they're really building there. Because I can't find words. Seventeen hundred million dollar. <laughs> Is this new technology 
in which from the time you enter the school, it will start teaching your children without teachers, physically present, uncle? I'm just asking. I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. I do know. With $1,700 million, you can build two schools and more decent schools in all 10 regions of Guyana. Yes. That's what you can do with that, with that kind of money. <laughs> when a government can say in Parliament only yesterday that they set aside $599 million of an IDB loan. Borrow money, you know. $1 million short, $600 million. Mm -hmm. To build a single abattoir for slaughter animals in Region 5. <laughs> yes. $599 million for build an abattoir in Region 5. Mahaika Maikoni. Then, what can I say? That slaughterhouse will, will slaughter the animals, clean them, cut them up, package it, and maybe export it without any humans involved. What do you guys think? That story is also in today's Kaicho News. You can, talk, you can turn and read it. Then yesterday, we reported that the government is going to spend $900 million to fix up two hinterland airstrips. Hear that? $900 million to fix up the airstrips. Not the building, the airstrip. <laughs> that too. The planes will land and take off without pilots having to do anything. Just sit. And the plane will land and take off by itself. <laughs> what a Guyana. Building airstrips year after year. Spending hundreds of millions of your tax dollars, of your children's money for the foreigners to land and fetch out your wealth. Man, you got to hear this. One of the airstrip is in Matthews Ridge, where the Chinese flying in day in, day in, day out to fetch away your manganese and your gold. And the other one is in Kayuni Mazaruni District, Region 7. I don't think I really know where Guyana wealth sits. <laughs> yes, where the gold and the diamonds really sits in this country right at that airstrip that same airstrip mm -hmm. your starving children money going to pave the way for them foreigners to bring out your gold and my diamonds them said i'm gonna share it with i soon you hear me then we're going to bring some and drop it off in our houses. I must keep looking out for some. <laughs> yes. Then they're going to spend $771 million to fix up 13 bridges around the place. Almost $60 million each. Yeah, man. $60 million each for a bridge. These bridges will sing a sweet song as you walk or drive over them. <laughs> what do you see, Greg? Of course. <laughs> this is the kind of lawlessness that has been going on with no end in sight for corruption. While they can't increase your pension and salaries and your kids don't have food in their lunch kits. That's what they're doing to Guyana. And doing to all of you. Those are just a few projects we reported on so far that is coming out. Yes, coming out from the tender board and parliament 
for this last few days only. Few, few days only. If I am to show y'all and explain everything these corrupt leaders doing to y'all presently, hmm. not last year or the years gone by, hmm. just this one budget, buddy, I am my drop dead. This one budget, 1040 million oil money, them throw in. Man, y'all would need more hospitals in every village to take care of our sickness. The sickness y'all gonna get. And let me make something very clear. What you're seeing going on now is nothing new, Uncle and Auntie. It was going on for the last 30 years in this land with both governments. And it's getting worse as the days go by. And nothing will stop it. Or nothing will change. These guys are born with corruption running through their bloodstream. Mm -hmm. You see why I have begun to say this conversation in this country has to change. And it has to change immediately. It must become your morning mantra. If I want to if I want to see change in this land, if I want a better health care, better education system, and a decent salary to live a decent life, Uncle. Don't change it and change your life. Don't change it. The life you're going to live will be worse come down the road and that of your future children. Corruption, corruption, uncle, is so, so horrible in this land that the international bodies just released their 2022 report on corruption. Just released it a few days ago. In which they say, big and bold, oil rich. <laughs> I love this one, Gregory. Oil rich Guyana, still in the company of the world's corrupt nations. This story is also in today's Kaicho News. Not last year. Today, please read it for yourselves. Glenn didn't make it up. It's there for the world to see. We just reported what was released just a few days ago. Everything I said there is only a few days ago. I ain't go back. Hmm. These are the politicians, both in the PPP and the PNC. Because the AFC dead. Don't talk about them. They are either in the, P the PNC or the PPP camp. Anybody can prove me wrong. Yes. They are the politicians who... These are the politicians who all y'all killing yourself for. Cussing down y'all neighbor. Abusing out one another in the streets about who is PPP and who is PNC. Day in and day out. While most of you going to bed hungry. Guys, they are so, so corrupt that they are turning a blind eye to every foreign company in Guyana. Allowing them to do us anything and everything. Corruption is Guyana's leprosy. Guyana's AIDS. Guyana's nasty sickness. Another story. Another story. In today's slideshow news, sorry about that. A Guyanese worker assaults the Chinese boss of the manganese company in Machu's Ridge. Yeah. The boy was knocked off because he was smoking a cigarette. And while he was boarding the aircraft to come out, leave, leave Machu's Ridge, the Chinese was making mockery and laugh story off of him. So he felt some kick and cough on the Chinese man. I hear the police looking for him. 
That same company was ordered by President Ali to fix back the bridge where the company broke up in Machu's Ridge. And to now. And to now it didn't fix back. <laughs> Maybe that is one of the bridge. You tax dollars. The 60 million dollar got to fix. President Ali words don't have weight. The foreigners own this country. They can come and do what they want. Take your things, broke up your country, beat up your people, yes, and left your people to suffer. They do the same thing all over Africa, Asia, and every other third world country as I speak. And laugh, <laughs> turn back and taunt you. Yes, get the so and so out of here. This is we thing. <laughs> how dare you tell me how much to take and what to do? Yes, uncle. The same thing is going on presently in the oil operations. Mm -hmm. Look at our roads. Especially in and around Georgetown, the capital city, the Linden Suzdike Highway, the entire East Bank Public Road, road to the sand pits at Timary are being mashed up by the seconds. Our infrastructure is being destroyed every hour, every hour as the days go by. Our fishing industry is on its deathbed. Flood waters is rising higher and higher because of the produced water coming up with the oil from 15,000 feet beneath the ocean floor that is being dumped into our Atlantic Ocean by the seconds. Yes. Yes, causing higher water out there in the Atlantic Ocean. No full liability coverage for an oil spill. The air we are now breathing is contaminated with the deadly chemicals and burning of the gas out there. The water we are presently drinking is becoming more and more polluted as more and more projects being approved by Jack Dale. You're not getting the US billions in taxes we were supposed to be getting from our oil by law. We are being taken for a ride with each project costs and the inflated production expenses. <laughs> with a 2% royalty and a half of a quarter barrel of oil, what they call 50-50 profit share. No ring fencing to prevent Exxon from thiefing out 99% of all the oil out there. Mm -mm. Now, you guys tell me, man, where on earth Guyana is going to find? Where Guyana is going to fork out the money to compensate those fishermen and their families in the thousands? Tell me where Guyana is going to get the money to rebuild the broke up roads and fix back the damaged infrastructures. Hmm? Tell me which river Guyana digging up or diving up the money that is required to filter the contaminated water we have to drink and pay the doctor bills for the citizens who are already suffering from typhoid fever, cholera, and other sicknesses by drinking that water. You guys need to tell me. You guys need to figure out where Guyana will get the billions of US from to compensate the Guyanese people and the region when an oil spill. Not if, when an oil spill splash out there. Hmm? Last but not least, which part of the universe Guyana plucking the money from to compensate the citizens of this country when they get a stroke, heart disease, lung cancer, pneumonia, 
other chronic diseases, and respiratory infections from breathing that now contaminated air that is blowing into our nostrils. Can somebody, anybody, say something to me? Soon, not very long from now, y'all will be making babies with deformities and disabilities. You see, yes, you see what the people in Asia and Africa look like and what they're going through. I don't have to tell you that. To the, today's technology, you can just Google it and look at them. Guyana is heading right there with these clowns you have parading themselves as intellectual politicians. You see why I say, Uncle, this conversation in this country have to change and change quickly? Extreme danger lurks at your doorsteps. Yes. That was a tic-tac I did. It will be playing on the radio so often. Just in case you miss what I say. Listen to the Kaicho radio. We may get some money from the Chinese and the Americans, the Canadians and the Europeans, the British, the Indians and the Australians. <laughs> but it will come in loans that will further strangle all of us. It's already happening. Everything is alone in this country. Guys, please. I am begging you, man. Change this conversation. Look what these people are doing to you. They're indebting your children and grandchildren. The residents of Buxton on the east coast of Demerara protested earlier today, like I said. I have no qualms with that. But I wish I can see that same crowd protesting for a better deal out of their God-blessed oil resources. Yes. Their wealth, their gold, their diamond, their timber, their bauxite, their manganese. That is being carted, carted off, uncle. By the boat loads and plane loads. Let me say this. Anytime they come out to protest for that, I am more than ready and willing to be in front of that protest. And I am saying this loud and clear. Now, guys, listen to a story. And after this, I'm done for tonight. It's Friday, it's Wednesday. Going home early to play with my grandbabies. <laughs> Let me take a deep breath. Because this is beyond a child's comprehension. Y'all ever hear a saying, you give away your behind for mess through your ribs? Hmm? Well, that is what is going on in this country. Let's get going. On to now, despite ExxonMobil confirm that their oil operations will destroy the entire seafood industry. You government still living in denial, still making fools out of the Guyanese people. Don't ask me why I don't know. But I will tell you this one. In 2021, government spent $58 million on fish ponds to mine fish like cows. In 2022, they budget $230 million for the Brackish Water Shrimp Initiative. In 2022, again, they fork out another $200 million to introduce and develop marine cage fishing. Then government say, them spend 1.2 billion, which is 1,200 million to give out <laughs> to about 8,000 fisher folks, 150,000 each. 
You hear the kind of money done come out in two years alone on Clonanti for the fishing industry that destroy that is dying. Sixteen hundred and eighty-eight million dollar. You hear me? Sixteen hundred and eighty-eight million dollar done come out in two years. Shortening your pension package, your salary increase to fix, yes, to fix road or to clean a gutter. Plus, for the two years, you don't lose $200 million what a fishing industry used to bring in. This is what you call business in this country. This is what your politicians doing in this country. Farking, farking out money from the budget, the tax dollars, to kick up the fishing industry back with fish cage and pay out one payment to the fishermen them in this country. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Man, if this is not craziness, I don't know what is. Today we carried another story in the Kaicho News in which them announced only yesterday in Parliament they're going to spend $445 million to build more shrimp farms and fish ponds. You hear me, right? Yesterday. $445 million to build more fish farms and fish ponds. You hear what I said there, man? In Parliament yesterday, they announced 445 million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this, this thing is, is getting, it's not mad, this man. This thing, sometimes you can't find words to describe what's going on. The oil industry, like I said, don't mess up the fishing industry. And now the little oil money, we are all getting. Mm -hmm. Have to be spent to uh, have to be spent to grow fish and shrimp for us to eat. Them mess up an entire industry that used to bring in seventy to hundred million US in our pockets every year, in our treasury. An industry that was feeding the nation with enough fish and shrimp at a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. Destroy thousands of fishermen and their families. And now have to find all kinds of magic. Forgive me some artificial fish and shrimp to eat. This is how they're running your country, Uncle and Auntie. This is, this is how they see business in Guyana. Can you guys believe that? The fishing industry used to bring in an average of 70 million US a year. Last year it bring in half of that. This year it might be zero. You know what you call that, auntie? Yes. I, I just said it. Give away you. Yes. For mess through you. Mm -hmm. This is the financial gurus. You guys are so, so proud to call. You're loving and caring business leaders. These are the people you would kill, fight and lose friendship over, like Adam Harris and me. 25 years me and Adam Harris sit together. We eat, we drink, we wine and dine. Not on each other. Not on each other but with each other. His party came in front, in front of the Kaicho News he helped to build. He was ready to throw all that away for his people and his party. <laughs> what a world we live in. My long-standing colleague and columnist for over 25 years, Freddie Kisun, Accused and abused me down on a video I see last night going through TikTok. I want to play it. I want to play it so you guys could hear it. Could you play that tape? Let the listeners and viewers see and listen. Go ahead, play it. 
people are always berating the government that they must be accountable, that they must be transparent, that they must respect people's dignity, the right to free speech, etc. But then something happened over the weekend that I thought it's exigent that we bring it to you, and I don't think um, this evening will be the end of the matter. It has to do with Mr. Glenn Lal and Kai Cho News. On Sunday, I did not see my column, and that was strange. The editor, whoever they are, from the time the paper start, if I'm somewhere else and they don't see the column, they would call and said, you haven't sent me a column. So it was quite surprising that on Sunday, I didn't see the column in the printed paper or the online edition. So I made some inquiries and found out that Mr. Lal had pulled the column. The column was a theoretical, a very scholarly examination of whether apartheid against Africans exists in Guyana. And so there was nothing personal, it was just a sociological analysis with reference to philosophy. So I was quite surprised to hear that Mr. Lal rejected the column. I, I would like to think Mr. Lal would have consulted his three close associates, Mr. G.H.K. Lal, Dr. Yog Mahadio, and Christopher Ram. Now, I don't want any libel, so I am not saying that they were part of the decision, but I know they're very close to Mr. Lal, and they advise him. <laughs> Oh boy, it's a good thing I like I like uh, TikTok. TikTok has a good audience, you know. Mm -hmm. My TikTok goes to between fifty to hundred thousand people. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Freddie should maybe Freddie should check how, how, people, how much <laughs> persons view his TikTok. <laughs> oh, Uncle and Auntie, Freddie, Freddie, out of all persons talking about free speech and freedom of the press. Freddie, Freddie should know that freedom of the press starts and stops at the helm of every media house owner on earth. The state media, for example, freedom starts and stops with what the government of the day wants to give the people of the country, Freddie. All other private media houses give the people what the publisher and editors decide that they're going to give the people when the day comes. In short, uncle and auntie, every media houses reflects the conscience of the editors of the day and the publishers and owners. They decide what they give the readers and the listeners. That's simple and plain like that. Freddie Kisun, out of all person, knows that very well. It's like any other business, Freddie. The owner decides what direction and how they want to run, run their business, brother, brother. And what they do when the day come, brother. What they choose to sell to their customers, no one decides for them, Freddy, how they should approach or how they run their business and what, and what Freddy Kisun and many others in the media do not understand. How come you don't understand that, Freddy? No one can tell you if you have a business, how you run your business. Hmm? I will share I will share a few examples with you guys so you can understand how media houses should and must operate. Ever since this newspaper started in 1994, 28 years ago, I have been at the helm. I have seen and learned so much that I ended up teaching almost every single editor and reporter that works in this news, news outfit, including Freddie Kisun. 
And that is not a boast. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. I dare challenge any of the hundreds of employees that pass through Kaicho News under me to deny that. Freddie Kisum, when he began writing his column many, many times, many times, business colleagues would call me and ask me if I read Freddie Kisum column. And I would say not as yet. In which after reading his column, I would pick up my phone and call Freddie Kisum and tell him, please don't write anything about business in this newspaper anymore because you're causing me and the newspaper embarrassment. Stick to what you're good at, politics. Uncle and auntie, I have gone so far to give instructions to Adam Harris, the then editor-in-chief, because he has been with me for more than 25 years too. And I said to him, anything Frederick is soon right on business, let Glenn Lal see. And we get along well since. From time to time, he gets out of hand and writes column that offended people and that are libelous. That lawyers would have to call me and say this thing, Freddie Wright is libelous. It gets so much out of hand, Uncle, that I told Freddie Kisun. Anytime I get a lawsuit, you will find the money to pay the lawyers and pay the judgment costs. And he knows that. Because one is in the courts with him right now. Many times, Freddie Kisun have written and offended people because that's all he knows. And when these matters are raised with Adam Harris, the next day, uncle, <laughs> Adam would say, Chief, you know, is the man's views. Freddie Kisun has pushed the buttons of many people so far that I stopped Adam Harris from approving his column and passed it down to his deputy editor, all because I trusted the gentleman's judgment and conscience more than Adam Harris, where Freddie Kisun's column is concerned. That's how far I had to go with Freddy. Nothing out of hand or obnoxious could have passed that editor. A guy named Nigel McKenzie. Uh -uh. Freedom of the press? Is Freddy Kisun? Is Freddy Kisun talking about that? No, man. No, Gregory. Mm. Uh -uh. Freddie Kisun came and worked with me for about six months. I put him to edit the letter pages daily. It didn't even pass a month. A month, Gregory. And people started complaining that their letters weren't being published. I got so upset one day, Gregory, that I went downstairs and held a special meeting with the staff and had to instruct Freddie Kisun not to hide or duck anybody's letter. <laughs> because he and them don't get along. I had to let him know that the letter pages of this newspaper belong to the citizens of this country and their views and opinions should and must be carried once it's, it's in good taste, factual, or free from libel. Mm -hmm. I remember clearly, man, Gildari, his no sidekick, was present in that meeting when that discussion took place. His doc used to dock people's letter and talking about freedom of the press, freedom of speech, and how to run media house. You heard him. I put him to run the editorial meetings <laughs> we normally have every day. Mm -hmm. Come, Freddie, come. Take over the meeting today from me, man. He stand up after three minutes 
I had to tell him, Freddy go back and sit down. Can't run a foul pen with three fouls inside. Abusing me now. How to run my newspaper. You hear me? Can't hold an editorial meeting. Ask Gildari, Adam Harris, or any member of the staff. Many times during the editorial meetings, I used to have to tell Freddy, shut up and sit down. You're talking a set of fart. And I would often say to him, when you were outside writing your columns, you would pick up your phone and cuss down Glen Lal about reports in the newspaper. Uncle and auntie I used to tell him, you lecture the university. Yes, why don't you send some proper reporters to the Kaicho News? The ones that you lecture and train. <laughs> he never sent one. Years after, like I told you, he ended up at Kaicho News. And I would ask him, I would take kicks off him, and say, where's the reporters you bring along with you, man? You see, uncle and auntie, it's one thing to be on the outside and pelt brick. Come in the house and see what you have to deal with. Then you will understand what newsroom is all about. The three, four letter pages with no more than eight or ten letters per day, he couldn't deal with. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't get any lawsuits during the time he was editing the letters. Now he's trying, now he's trying to insinuate that GHK Lal, Yog Mahadev, and Christopher Ram are my advisors. Is how much Jack Dale them paying you to paint that picture, Freddy? They gotta be paying you very well. Because you out of all persons know that Glenn Lal needs no advice from you. You have never given me any or anyone on how to run newspaper. And you out of all persons, Freddy, should know that. Mm -hmm. Because once I requested a meeting with you many years ago to discuss the contents of your writings. Mm -hmm. The contents of your writings. And told you that I will have my lawyer present during the meeting. And we both agreed that you will bring your lawyer too. You brought Nigel Hughes. And I had camera drum Jatan and Moses Nagamo too. You remember? You can't say you forget that. The meeting concluded, and there wasn't anybody advising Glen Lal. I made my points and laid out my rules, stood my ground. I was very clear in front of, in front of the lawyers and in front of you. So to paint a picture that Glenn Lal has advisors. You're just trying to be who you always were and is. Nothing more than being wicked and malicious. GHK Lal is a contributor to this newspaper, just like you, Freddy. Christopher Ram, yes, also from time to time makes contribution to this newspaper. And he's a colleague and my lawyer. As for Yog Mahadeo, I have always admired that, that young man for his stance he took when he was working at GTT. Yes, in which he wasn't involved in any skullduggery. But because skullduggery happened under his leadership, he handed GTT's resignation. Now that's a man of my heart. I wonder if Freddy Kisun reads the daily Kaicho news he writes for or listens to my radio program about the crooks he now turn a mouthpiece for. Mm -hmm. hmm? Uncle, you know, when you talk about sellout in business, is when you're there bad. Or you got the last set of products on your hand. And you want to get rid of it to catch your hand? Well, Freddie Kisun and Kata Business. 
So he's trying to get you on, selling out himself, promoting a set of crooks. And I said that because I was in Africa when I heard he and Gildari started to do an online radio program. Something they call a radio online show. <laughs> so when I came up, and I'll be very frank with you people, I did call Gildari and ask him what happened, bro. When you leave Kaicho News, you told me, boss, you weren't feeling well, and that your eyes were giving you some problems, and you were going to get it fixed. I even asked him, uncle, to work from home, not to write anymore in the newspaper, but to continue to host the radio program he had init initiated on the Kaicho radio, just to keep him occupied and let him collect a salary. And he did tell me, boss, the radio program will call for a lot of reading. And you know, that will affect the eyes more. So I leave it like that and give him his pension packet, package and wish him well. Yes, good luck. <laughs> Lo and behold, there he is doing a radio program with Freddie Kisun online. <laughs> I called Freddie too and said, Freddie, I am surprised at you going to an online radio when you could have been doing a program on the Kaicho radio in which you would have more online viewership and the entire Guyana populace at the same time. You know what he said, Uncle and Auntie? <laughs> Glenn, you never tell me anything, and the people offer me something. Yes, Freddy, something for do. Yes, something for do what you're doing there, no. selling out your soul to the devils. Just to let you guys know, Uncle, both Freddy and Gildari know very well that Kaicho News is not run, not run as a one-man show. We always have a daily meeting to discuss every major issues or stories that we are, do, that we are, we are going to do collectively. I have never allowed Kaicho News to run as a one-man show throughout the 28 years. And the entire staff, including you, Freddie, and Gildari know that. Yes. You know, guys know that if something is unhealthy for the newspaper, any employee can raise the subject matter in which we can all take corrective measures or the necessary action needed. Both of you know it. Now let me turn to Freddie's column, not the one that was dropped. I will deal with that in, a, in two minutes. I requested a meeting since last week with Freddie Kisun to have a discussion as to what he now, he, what he now writes. Mm -hmm. Because, Uncle and Auntie, I have been bombarded with questions about Freddie Kisun turning a mouthpiece for the PPP government. And, <laughs> oh boy, and he never liked that. And he was never ever like that, uncle. Matter of fact, you, he was never a mouthpiece for any government. The Freddie Kisun I know was extremely critical of the leadership and style of both governments, the PPP and the PNC. Mm -hmm. That Freddie Freddy Kisun has raised, that Freddie, that issue uncle has raised my concern. And as the publisher of this newspaper, I wanted to have a chat with him because we haven't spoken in over two years. A matter of fact, I can't remember if I seen him face to face in two years. Uncle and auntie, people's concern 
forced me to run a check of the numbers online that is reading Freddie Kisun column from 2018 to 2022. And that is why I wanted to have this discussion with him, to show him that it has significantly been dropping since the PPP came back into office. I wanted to show him the figures, yes, to show him how he loses marbles and lost his sting in the writings. You see why I love today's technology, Uncle? You can see how many people read each article in the Kaicho News and see how many people view a radio program or a television program. That's today's world we live in with this new technology, the WWW, the World Wide Web with Internet. Today's technology, Uncle, allows you to see all your data. It gives business people an insight as to where their business is heading so that they can take corrective actions. And that is all I wanted to show Freddie Kisun and talk to him about. I also wanted to let him know that I have three new editors and I give them instructions anytime he or any columnist write write something that does not sit well with their conscience in which they are uncomfortable with or that they feel unhealthy just just drop it I even reminded them that newspapers are responsible for the molding and shaping of future generations. So guys, be mindful, be careful what you guys publish. That's nothing new to Freddy. And that's how, that's how your Sunday column was brought to my attention, Freddy Kisun. Yes, like I said, the newspaper or any newspaper, any media house, I, I should say, reflects the conscience of the editor of the day. And if the editor of the day hmm, is going to say, Mr. Lal, he or she is uncomfortable with your column, then it is what it is. Who are you to tell the editor that your conscience supersedes that of the editor of the day and the publisher. <laughs> huh? No, man. No. No, Freddy Kisun. Guys, if you want to read Freddy Kisun column, I was going to drop it in the, in the comment section. But you can check out the Guyana Chronicle. Yes. Or, or their sidekick, the Guyana Times yesterday. It's there with his picture. He looks very nice too inside. <laughs> Let me say this to Freddy Kisun and his likes. Glenn Lal has to manage and run his news outfits. Not to become a failure or a loser. But one of success. That if any column taking up space in my house. In which... It's not bringing business into my home. Then, then I will not do what you did, Freddie Kisun. Go on TikTok or on, on an online platform and berate me. Eh, eh. Glenn Lyle will not do that. I wasn't brought up that way. I will fire you, yes, but not on this radio program. I will fire you tomorrow in person. Come at 11 a.m. Yes. Let me give you your little package. Yes. And share that data with you. Shake hands in good faith. And say tata. Bye bye. In a peaceful fashion. With that I say. Namaste. Namaste. You know guys. I have planned tonight. 
to give you all another bombshell today. But because of Freddie Kisun taking up so much of tonight's program, I will throw the bombshell Friday. So tune in Friday. Same time, 7.20 p.m. for more bombshells. Or if you don't want to hear bombshells, and you want to hear gossip, abuse out and cuss out, yeah, man. Jump on the Gildari and Freddie Kisun show. Yes, jump on their platform. It's Friday night. But it doesn't start at 7.20. I'm told I start at 8. And have a great evening. I love you. God bless you people.